Hi. Hi. Got the baggage check there? Oh, right here, dear. Come on. Have a seat, dear. I'll be right back. Am I really doing this? Me? Kitty Weaver, Pasadena housewife, secretary of the PTA, den mother for the Cub Scouts? Have I really come to Monterey to spend a weekend with the husband of my best friend? Such are the facts of life. You want to know the facts of life? I'm going to teach the facts of life to you. Now, concerning the birds and bees, Inhabiting all those trees Establishing families Up with each daisy Singing like crazy Storing up money Saving them money Those are the facts of life Oh yeah The ordinary acts of life uh -huh. That every living creature Seems to do and all in a short two months. That's when it started, just two months ago. It was the Halloween dance at the club, the usual fall dance with the usual prizes for the usual tournament. And as usual, the prizes were handed out by the usual master of ceremonies with his oh-so-usual jokes, Larry Gilbert. Yes, sir. Here he is, folks, the runner-up for the fifth flight, that fugitive from the fairways, our favorite dentist, Dr. Busby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I want to tell you, Doc plays like a dentist, too. Every time he gets on the green, he strokes the ball towards the hole and says, open a little wider, please. <laughs> oh, Larry. He's one of our great members. He had 76 today. I know, I counted the olive pits. <laughs> I was bored, bored with the jokes, even bored with the idea that we were leaving next morning for Acapulco the six of us who always take our vacations together. There was Doc Mason, everybody's friendly family physician. He knew every incision in the group. And Connie, Doc's wife. Connie's the lusty type, no problems for Connie. There was Mary Gilbert, Larry's wife. Wonderful girl, practical, sensible, no nonsense about Mary. And I was there, son's husband. As usual, my problem child was down in the locker room shooting craps, and as usual, losing. Here you are, Doc. Congratulations. Thank you, Larry. And bless your heart. It's all right. <laughs> I love to play with Doc, although I'd rather play with his wife, Myrtle. Plays nice golf. She's not so good with the irons, but oh, the woods. <laughs> I didn't qualify very well for the tournament. I was out of bounds five times. Three on the front nine and twice in the ladies' locker room. <laughs> Would you like to leave a call? <laughs> anyway, these two Hollywood stars were out in the golf course, and they were watching this guy tee off. And the one gal said, your husband swings much better since he got that new stance. And the other gal said, no, that's not a new stance. That's a new husband. <laughs> that's a new... <laughs> I'm sorry. Your vodka gimlets are showing. <laughs> vodka, that's an alcohol rub from the inside. <laughs> The six of us left early. 
in the same kind of cars, to the same kind of homes, with the same kind of mortgages, and the same kind of arguments. But I guess that happens after 15 years of the same kind of marriage. How much? How much? How much? Not much. Small game. Actually, we had a lot of laughs. How much worth the laughs? Peanuts. The total amount. Salt, bags, shells, everything. A couple of hundred. You're not well, you know that. You are a very sick man. Honey. It's a disease. You need help. Come on. Some kind of an organization like Crapshooters Anonymous or something. Oh, baby, can't we forget it? Tomorrow this time we'll be in Acapulco. And we need it, honey. Really, we need some time together. Yes, we do. Just the two of us. In a cozy little tropical hideaway. That's the idea. No one there except our entire neighborhood. Whatever happened to the family plan? Well, it's gotta be just the six of us. It's always just the six of us. It's like going away to camp. Honey, now you know you're crazy about Connie and Doc. Yes, I am, and I like Mary, too. But six days of old laughing boys and forced cheerfulness. <laughs> Larry? <laughs> yes, Larry. Oh, Larry's all right. He wouldn't harm a fly. Unless he bored it to death. Wow, we are you in a mood tonight. How do you like that? I hope Mother remembers Bobby's violin lesson. A dame like that heckling me. And Tommy's dentist appointment. What dame, dear? Your big mouth friend. Kitty? Yeah, Kitty, your buddy, wisecracking Nellie. Milton Burl and Bloomers. Oh, Kitty's all right. Believe me, she has problems of her own. Like an acute inability to keep her big mouth shut, especially in the middle of my biggest joke. Well, let's be fair, dear. You could do with some new material. Yeah. Well, if I'm so bad, how come the committee always asks me to serve as master of ceremonies? Because you're the head of the committee. And so terribly available. And so terribly cute. <laughs> cute? I haven't been cute since I was four. Fine vacation this is gonna be. What kills me is that I wouldn't spend $18 for a new girdle the other day because I thought it was too extravagant. What do you need a new girdle for? A figure like yours. You'd look a little more often. You wouldn't ask such a stupid question. I look plenty. I mean at home. Oh. Look, uh, honey, uh, I'm turning over a new leaf. Oh, you've said that before. No, no, I mean it. I'm a new man, I promise you. You've promised before, and the only promises you ever keep are to your bookmaker. Now, look, honey, I really mean it this time. The dice, the track, the card games, the ball games, everything. All through. Kitty. Please say it, baby. Well, I'm an idiot, but I do. You know, they say the best time to start a vacation is the night before. They do? Hmm. Well, if that's what they say. time for this to happen. How about this? If I told that kid once, I told him a thousand times, leave my things alone. A $75 reel ruined. I won't need to take an evening gown. I wish that kid would play with something of his own. Cocktail dress will do it. Something nice and summery. Looks like he was trying to gift wrap it. And some sweaters and skirts and play suits, that ought to do it, huh? A lot you care. A lot I care about what, dear? But a 10-year-old kid goes around ruining his father's fishing equipment that costs $75 wholesale. Aren't we a little bundle of nerves tonight? I wouldn't talk. Well, if I'm a little nervy, it's just that I'm a bit concerned about leaving Mother with the children. You've got nothing to worry about. I hid the liquor. No, I'm serious. Mother's getting on. She sure is. She's getting on your nerves. She's getting on mine. It's not very funny. Neither's your mother. Well, who are you not to like my mother? 
Who do you have to be not to like your mother? Oh, you really need this vacation. I wouldn't talk. I wish you'd find some other comment than I wouldn't talk. I wish you did. I wish you wouldn't say it with your mouth full of toothpaste. And I wish you wouldn't mention it every night. Well, you do it every night. And you mention it every night. Well, only because you do it every night. We've been married for 15 years, and except for our honeymoon, that makes 365 days each year times 15. That's 7,687 times that you've said I, I wouldn't talk with your mouth full of toothpaste. And then you asked me not to mention it. Mm -hmm. well, after all, mm -hmm. I could, as patient as I can be, that's a small thing, I know, but it's little things like this. And as long as you're getting personal, I think you could do with a little less cream on your face. What? Oh, cold cream, vanishing cream, skin cream. One of these nights, you're gonna slide right out of bed. Oh, don't change the subject. When it comes to being irritable, it's getting so that when you come home at night, I have to hide the children. Yeah, with my luck, I keep finding them. Oh, Larry. If I'm irritable at the end of the day, I've got very good reason. I'm sure you have. How'd you like to spend your life writing advertising copy for Mother Showalter's pickles? The greatest boon to mankind since inside plumbing. I know it isn't easy, dear. How many slogans can you write about a kindly old lady on a pickle jar? Kindly old lady. She looks like Nikita Khrushchev with a wig. You can't tell her from the pickles. But don't you see, dear? And let me tell you something. That's a fast track out there. What do you think I do every day? Leave the house all dressed up in my negotiating blues and have a few high-level conferences with fat clients in pinstripe suits? Well, that's just the reason you need a nice, lovely rest away from everything, even the children. Yeah, but why can't we go alone? Why is it always the six of us? I want a vacation, not group therapy. Darling, I'd love to go away with you alone, but this is the only way we can afford it, by sharing expenses. It's, it's sensible, practical, and economical. Honey, will you promise me something? What? That once, just once, before we're too old to enjoy it, let's do something that's not practical, sensible, and economical. Like, for instance, now? Oh, Larry, it's late. I... I, I've got to make up the children's schedule and finish packing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, you really are a little boy. Now, aren't you? Yeah, and you're not helping me get any older. Oh, Larry. Come in. Miss Gilbert, it's Bobby. He's got a temperature and a sore throat. It's only 101, but I thought you better look in on him. Nothing serious, Mary. Little virus going around. I'm staying home. Oh, that's ridiculous. Tell her, Doc, it's nothing. That's right, Mary. A couple of days of fever and he'll be fine. Then I'll be down in a couple of days. Well, if you're staying, I'm staying. Oh, now, don't be silly. You need this vacation. But, Mary, I can't enjoy myself. I said I'd be down in a couple of days. Well, your mother's coming over. Why can't she take care of him? If you were flat on your back with a fever of 102, would you like to be left alone here with my mother? Come down in a couple of days. See you at the airport. Okay, Doc. Sentimental departures were not one of my son Steve's strong points. If he gritted his teeth, he could barely kiss Mom goodbye, while, of course, with Dad, it was just a manly handshake and a wish for good fishing. And 13-year-old Joni was at that stage of growing up where Mother was just another competing female. Goodbye to Mom was a wave of the hand while Daddy got a warm kiss and a big hug. In other words, they were both on schedule and both doing fine. Hello? Hello? Oh, just a moment for you, dear, long distance. Hmm. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Robinson. What? San Francisco? Well, what happened? Yes, I know, but I, I... Yes, sir? Well, I'm glad Johnny's gonna be all right. All right. Goodbye. Robinson's kid overturned in a car last night. He's up there in a the hospital. Nothing serious, but I've gotta wait here till the old man gets back. Oh, Jack. Well, if you're not gonna go, I'm not gonna go. Don't be silly. No. Now, you go down there with the bunch, and I'll try to be there by Wednesday or Thursday. Now, Jack, you know I don't want to go if you're not going. Nonsense. Now, you better hurry and get the plane. I'll go and get the car. I hated the idea of going off without Jack, and I guess Laughing Boy felt the same about Mary. 
We tried a little small talk, and believe me, small talk between us was the smallest there is. Three-hour trip. Yeah. Fast plane. Mm-hmm. Comfortable? Oh, yeah. Read? No. Guess I will. Mm. Well, it's been a ball talking to you. What's that for? Painting. Who paints? I do. You do? Sure. <laughs> You're kidding. I am not. You a painter? Well, what do you want me to do, cut off my ear? <laughs> no, it's just that I never... Just a hobby. I, I do it to relax. I figure it's easier than hitting the kids and almost as much fun. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's amazing. You think you know people all your life, and yet you never really get to know the little things about them, do you? Not if you're lucky. Acapulco was just as beautiful as everyone had said. Our hotel was high on a cliff. And that evening, we had dinner on a lovely moonlit terrace overlooking the sea. Doc cautioned Larry and me about overeating, but he and Connie ate everything in sight. They were the only ones who had taken the shot, so they felt sure that whatever it is you get down there, they weren't going to get it. The next morning, we were up at dawn. Larry, always the master of ceremonies, had chartered a fishing boat and was personally seeing to it that we didn't keep the marlin waiting. Hey, Doc, come on. It's almost... What's the matter? We've got it. You got what? Don't ask and don't get it. Yeah, but the boat, it's all... You and Kitty go on alone. Oh, but... You'll have to excuse me. Yeah, well, how about breakfast? Can I send you some eggs or some... Please. <laughs> What's wrong? Doc and Connie, they got it. Oh. Can we help? No, they got all they can handle. Well, what do we do? Well, let's go anyway. You mean you go out there with me, just the two of us? Might as well. The boat's paid for. That's what I like about you. You make me feel so wanted. Hey, you know something? What? You look like a 12-year-old kid, like you just fell off the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. At six in the morning, don't give me compliments. Give me coffee. On the boat. Come on. Oh. Mmm. Nothing. Nothing in this world ever tasted so good. You're so right. What a morning. This air, that sky. Yeah, and all those fish down there hissing at us. Let's make a pact. Hmm? No jokes. You don't tell them, and I don't have to pretend they're funny. The strain may kill both of us. Let's risk it. Deal? Deal. Boy, isn't this great. I haven't felt this good since I was a kid. Funny, I, I never think of you as a kid. Where'd you grow up, back east? No, oh, Native, Los Angeles, Selma Street School, Fairmont High. After that, I... You're kidding. Why am I kidding? I went to Fairmont High. Well, how about that? <laughs> Remember Miss Hammersmith? Agatha Leonora Hammersmith, old wall-to-wall -wall chin? <laughs> That's the one. What a loser. She was my homeroom teacher. Mine, too. Isn't that amazing? What, that I went to high school? No, that we both had the same homeroom teacher. Oh, I don't know. In these days of hydrogen bombs and guided missiles, you'd be surprised how seldom you walk up to a person and say, pardon me, but who was your homeroom teacher? <laughs> it's still amazing that we never knew. Well, I probably got out a little before you. Oh, a long time. Well, I didn't exactly graduate in the same class with Francis X. Bushman. How old are you? Five years younger than you. How old are you? Let's forget it. Gee, those were the days. 
those Friday afternoon football games. Remember the fight song? Remember it, I wrote it. You wrote it? The words, that is. F stands for far fame, Fairmount. A for her, her aim so, so high. I for her independence. I for her, her real rough life. Go Fairmount! And for her many heroes. Oh, for her open heart. <laughs> and cause her name's great. T cause her team's great. Go, 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 Fairmount High. And cause her name's great. T cause her team's great. Go, 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 go Fairmount <laughs> you really wrote that. Well, let's not lose our heads. It's not exactly my fair lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I used to love those games. I remember in my senior year, I made cheerleader. Oh, I want to tell you! Oh, my God! What's that? Hey, what happened? What oh, my God! The strike! The strike! Do something! What do I do? Well, it's easy. Now, you just... All you do is you... you, you hey, Carlos, what does she do? Well, she's got to wait, senor. Wait for what? Well, the marlin will hit the bait. It already hit the bait. Well, then the bait will sink. Now, don't be nervous. It's just like any other fish. Now, now pull. Pull back hard. I can't hold it. No, I can't. I can't, Larry. I'll lose it. Help me. All right. Okay. Uh, Larry, look! How are we going to get that from the can? Save your strength. This could take a long time. How long? Can't tell. Could be two or three hours. Three hours for one fish? I delivered a whole baby in an hour and a half. Yeah, but he wasn't skidding across the water on his tail. Please. Keep your eye on the fish. Doing fine. Just stay in there. You look good. I can't. Give him a little, but keep firm. I can't hold on any longer. My arms are killing me. My arms are going to fall Concentrate. off, Larry. Concentrate. Don't talk so much. All right, all right. It's only a fish, you know. Well, play him. Play him. It's easy for you to talk. You sit there and give me orders. Look out. Pull him in. You want him to get away? My arms are like lead. Help me. I think this baby's had it. Oh, I know this baby has. Hold it, Larry. Hold him. It's a monster. An absolute monster. Hold up, hold up. Okay, I am. Is that a beauty? Oh, do you think they'll lose it? Watch you it, think boy. we can get it in the boat? Watch those gas. Oh. about Doc and Connie. Yeah. I guess we better. Doc? Doc? We caught one. A marlin, big as a house. 150 pounds. Say, how you feeling? Miserable, but that's an improvement. Well, what about dinner? No, no, thanks. Well, could we send something over? Some soup? A cup of tea? How about some custard? Please. Well, I'm kind of beat. Yeah, me too. I think I'll have some dinner sent over to my room. Yeah, I guess I will, too. Thanks for a wonderful day. See you in the morning? Right. Night. Night.
Would you ring Mrs. Weaver's room, please? Hello? Hello? Isn't this kind of silly? I mean, when two people with the same homeroom teacher catch their first Marlin together, the least they can do is drink to the Marlin and their homeroom teacher, co-education, or the end of Prohibition, or Dean Martin, something. I think we owe it to Miss Hammersmith. Meet you in the bar in a half hour. Yeah. Senor. Hi. Hi. You are a big girl, aren't you? Hope you don't mind. Mind? I'm counting on it. <laughs> Vermouth Canelo. Oh. Mucho Kiko. Si, senor. Ah, magnifico. I feel wonderful. So do I. You look wonderful, too. Do I? Real great. I just wish Mary and Jack were here. Yeah, me too. Well, to our Marlin. To our Marlin. You know, it's kind of sad. When the other fish go upstream this year to spawn, he won't be with them. Salmon go upstream to spawn. Marlin uh, make other arrangements. I'll drink to that. <laughs> to our Marlin. What are we going to call it? Well, he looked a little like an uncle of mine named Claude. Well, if it's good enough for your uncle, it's good enough for our Marlin. <laughs> he was strong, he was brave. He was a credit to his people. Which is more than I can say for Uncle Claude. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if I ask you for a dance? Well, I'd be inclined to chance it if you kept your distance. I'll watch it. Our waiter seems to think that we should be eating dinner. Silly man. I've had a wonderful day. I hate to see it end. Look at that. Ten years ago, I'd have been in my suit by now and down there for a moonlight swim. Me too. Crazy, isn't it? People our age talking about moonlight swims. Ridiculous. Probably catch our death of cold. Sore throats, sinus headaches. Pleurisy, goose pimples. The whole bit. I'll be ready in five minutes. You bring the towels. I get the penicillin. <laughs> Gesundheit. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Here. Uh. Ah, Bless you. Thank you. Ah. 
Hey, what you need is a good stiff shot of bourbon. I've got a bottle in my bag. I'll bring it over to your bungalow. Oh, thanks. Don't you think maybe you, you should send it over with the bellboy? I don't know. That could be dangerous. Sure, it might be catching it. You wouldn't want to give an innocent bellboy a cold, would you? No, I certainly wouldn't. Ah! <laughs> oh, ah. you better hurry. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you please ring Mr. Gilbert? Never mind. Oh. Mr. Gilbert said this is for you. Oh, thank you. T tell Mr. Gilbert I said thank you very much. I, I don't speak very good English. Oh, well, uh... Tell Mr. Gilbert, I said, muchas gracias. I don't speak very good Spanish either. I'm a Greek. Oh, well, yeah. just, just wave at him as you go by. Thank you. <laughs> The next day was even more beautiful than the first. Carlos developed engine trouble, so fishing was out. And Larry and I spent the day like real touristas. We shopped in all the funny little shops, tried on the funny hats, took a ride in a donkey cart, had dinner on the patio, and danced till midnight. And when this lovely, lovely day finally came to an end, and it was time to say goodnight, I guess we both thought we'd better play it safe, so it was, it was just a friendly handshake. However, a little later that night... Hello? Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? Can't sleep. Me either. I'm starved. Me too. What's your opinion of eating late at night? Suicide. Ever do it? Only late at night. Got any connections in the kitchen? Just happened to. Well? Set the table for two. Right. Right. with it. Thanks. <laughs> ah, yes. Hey, Jim. You're kidding. <laughs> Take that. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't believe it.
There's not much point in pretending it hasn't happened, is there? What are we going to do? We're going to forget about it. Yeah, but tomorrow... Tomorrow, let's forget about it. Tomorrow might be too late. Yeah, I guess so. Good night. Good night. plan it that way, but it all happened just as if we had. Both Jack and Mary called to say they couldn't get down at all. Poor Doc and Connie remained under the weather, and Larry and I were left alone. Alone to be in love. Comfortably, wonderfully, happily in love. And loving every moment of it. We were relaxed and easy with each other. I read, he painted, and he even occasionally wanted my critical judgment. We swam and had wonderful picnic lunches on the beach, and we talked endlessly about everything, even the problems of raising children. Are you terribly close with your kids? As close as any father in the electronic age. I'm only permitted to talk during the commercials. <laughs> what about the intimate stuff? How do you handle that? Well, Bobby's too young, but last year I told Tommy the facts of life. All of them? All the ones I know. <laughs> what did he say? He just looked at me and said, that's very nice, Daddy, but I'm not interested. You see, I'm going in the real estate business. <laughs> and then suddenly it was over. It was time to go home. And I think we both dreaded that moment that would be our last together in Acapulco. I usually don't have much trouble saying what I mean or feel, but... You don't have to say anything. I know how you feel. Do you? Do you feel the same thing? Yes. Thanks. It's been a lovely dream, and now it's over. All over. But it was so beautiful. I guess we're both intelligent enough to realize that it was this place being thrown together like this that... Of course. Couldn't happen in a million years back home. Never. But it was so beautiful. But now we'll, we'll just have to forget it. Go back where we belong. Yeah. Back to Pasadena. And the PTA and the Cub Scouts. Back to show Walter's pickles. Yeah. But I'll remember this week for a long time. Me too. I'll remember it every time I hear soft music or see the ocean. Or eat a tamale. And we have those every Saturday night. <laughs> Kitty. No, Larry, it's over. I think I better go to my room. If you want something, ask for it. Mommy, can I sleep over at Sandy's on Friday? Nope. Why not? Because you can't, that's why. But why can't I? Good morning, dependents. Hey, Good morning to you. There you are. Oh. Oh, I forgot, huh? Gee, Dad, thanks. Yes, yes thanks. All the way from Acapulco. Isn't that nice? What are they? Harachis, real Mexican shoes. Do they have any footballs? 
How much did they cost? I hope you didn't get hooked. You know, they sell them on Alvarez Street for a buck a pair. Where have we failed? Tommy, when you get a gift, you don't ask what it costs. <sighs> hey, I wish you could have seen this fish we caught. It must have been 150 pounds. That big? Big. It was a whopper. Then how about Sandy <laughs> sleeping over here on Friday? It took almost three hours. No. Why not? Because he can't. But why? Larry, will you please tell him? Tell him what? He can't sleep over. You can't sleep over. Not me, Sandy. Not him, Sandy. Neither can Sandy. Neither can Sandy. Why not? Why not? Because I said so. That's why not. You hear that? The Supreme Court says no. That's why not. Say, this fish stood on its tail. It must have been six feet long. Mom, my note. And it, then it skidded across the water. What note? To the get fish. out of Jim. What for? I told what? you to try out for the skin diving club. And I told you you're too young. Oh, Mom. Larry, will you please tell him? Tell him what? He's too young. You're too young. Oh, gee. Dear, you'd have loved it down there. The nights were like velvet. Well, I'm sure I would. Oh, boys, it's it's 8.40. We're late. Tonight, darling. Be less hectic. See you, Dad. Bye, Dad. Bye. Good morning, Mr. Gilbert. Welcome home. Good morning, Gussie. How was the vacation? Oh, wonderful. We caught this big fish. It must have weighed 150 pounds. Uh, and when you uh, saw that thing... Some other time, Mr. Gilbert. Some other time. The cleaner man's here. Hi, Mr. Gilbert. How's the fishing? Sensational. Caught a marlin, 150 pounds. Really? Guy on my block caught one 170. <laughs> Yeah, well. Oh, say, Mr. Gilbert, about that blue sport shirt of yours. It faded a little last time. You, you want it dyed? Fine, fine. Uh, what color? Surprise me. Gee, I'm so sorry you had to miss Acapulco, Jack. It was so beautiful. Mm. The hotel was on this high cliff. Fabulous view. Mm. Larry and I spent quite a lot of time together. You see, Doc and Connie got the bug. Hmm. And, uh, so Larry and I had to fish alone. We caught this enormous fish. Hmm. We were together for six days. Hmm. Alone, together. Just the two of us. Hmm. And we fell in love. Madly in love. We had this wild, raving love affair. It was the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. Did you hear what I said? What kind of fish you say it was? Marlin. No kidding. Big? Big enough. Well, that's great. Say, how was it being with old Larry all that time? Dullesville? Very. Well, don't you worry a bit. Old Dad will make it up to you. Honey, I'll call you later. Mrs. Weaver, the cleaner would like to see you. Good morning, Mrs. Weaver. Oh, uh, yesterday, Mr. Weaver gave me some clothes he wore up in Frisco. I, um, I found these track tickets. 500 bucks worth. Who knows, they're, uh, there might be a winner there. Thank you. I'll tell Mr. Weaver. Goodbye, Mrs. Weaver. Goodbye. Goodbye, never seen each other again, it might have been easy. 
But no, no such luck. Not for us. Weekly bridge games at each other's homes. Winter concerts at the Philharmonic. Season tickets to the Rams. Weeks of being constantly thrown together and never being given a chance to forget. And then came the night of Doc and Connie's surprise party for us at the club. They had had Claude stuffed and presented him to Larry and me as a present. They wanted a speech, so Larry just said thank you for both of us. And then the music started and everyone got up to dance and we were left alone. Poor Claude. He was so beautiful. I kind of hate sharing him like this. I know. Would you like to dance? I can't go on like this. Oh, Larry, please. I've got to see you. Please, let's just dance. It's not over, is it? Shh. Well, is it? No, it isn't. Let's not be noble about it. We've got to. I don't know how it's going to work, but we've got to see each other. This is no place to talk about it. We'll meet somewhere. We can't. Just to talk? But when? How about tomorrow, lunch? Can't. PTA luncheon. Get out of the PTA. It's at my house. How about Wednesday? Uh, my day at the hospital. Thursday. Thursday, Jack plays poker. Oh, Larry, do you think we ought to? I'll call you Thursday morning. What if my mother's there? You better call me. Oh, where? Uh, at the office. When? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Yeah. And uh, use another name. Like what? Yeah, well, anything. Pick one out of the phone book. Well, how about Sally? Uh, no, a last name. Oh, uh, Jones. Good, good, good. Kitty Jones. Yeah, good. No, no, a first name and a last name. You know, like Mamie Eisenhower. Oh, we couldn't use that. No, that's just an example. Oh. No, just say, say you're Miss Swift. But... Miss Swift from the community chest. Okay, Miss, Miss Chest. Yeah, but... No, Miss Swift. Miss Swift. Yeah. At 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. evidence of readership, listenership, and sales acceptanceship on the neighborhood level. However, I... Excuse me. Hello? Hello, yes? Yes, he's here, but he's tied up at the moment. Who's calling, please? Oh, it's for you, Larry, Miss uh, Swift of the community chest. Oh, fine. I'll take it in my office. Oh, will you take it here, please? We're pressed for time. Well, well, sure. Sure, I'll... I'll... Hello? Yeah. Oh, how are you, Miss Swift? How's your chest? I, I mean your community. Community chest. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you alone? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, no. Can you talk? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. Well, uh, is everything all right? I, I mean, about tonight? Yes, I find I will be able to attend the meeting. Uh, Nine o'clock, wasn't it? Yes, but uh, where? I believe it was at the Arroyo Public Library, right? You mean in front? Yes, indeed. All right. I'll be there. Anytime. Always glad to help out. Mm hmm? I'm sorry. It's perfectly all right. That's the kind of work I like my men to get into. Good public relations. 
Now, to get back to this show, Walter. Hmm? Larry, what's keeping you? Keeping me? Oh, my, aren't we spruced up? Yeah, well, you see, I have to go to this meeting. Yeah, I know all about the meeting. We discussed it this morning. We did? At breakfast. I admit you seem to have something else on your mind, but we did, and you're all late. Bobby's been waiting five minutes. Bobby? It's your night to be chief. What are you talking about? Why, MCA Indian Guides, this is the bi-monthly meeting. Indian Guides? But I have to go to a community chess meeting. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Oh, you can't do that to Bobby. You'd break his heart. What time's the community chess meeting? Well, I've got to be there by 9. Oh, well, it's only 7. You can make them both. No, but I can't. Oh, I... yes, you can. Every boy wants his father to be chief, and you're just not going to disappoint Bobby. Oh, all right. Oh, you forgot your feather. Good luck, Chief. What's your name again? Big White Buffalo. Ugh. Ugh. All right, we now come to the election of a new wampum collector. But since Big Brave Eagle did such a good job last month, I propose we elect him again this month. Well, wait a minute. Now, all in favor say how. How? Ah. Opposed? I oh, am. Yeah. The hows have it. Now, if someone will move for an adjournment. But we're... Big White Buffalo. Yes, little gray squirrel. This is the night I'm to give my report. Report? On smoke signals, their origins and meanings. Yeah, well, it's a little late. You know, we all. Big are... White Buffalo. Yes, Big Gray Squirrel. Little Gray Squirrel worked on that report three hours every night for many moons. Yeah, but and we... Little Gray Squirrel's gonna read that report. Uh, some... Isn't that right, Big White Buffalo? Well... Yeah, well, we're dying to hear it. Go ahead, Little Gray Squirrel. Smoke signals. <laughs> smoke signals. The smoke signal was the lifeline of the American Indian. While it is ritualistic, in the concept, it nonetheless found its utility in many practical ways. I agree. And became the now, means of communication between tribes and families. That's very interesting, little gray squirrel. We'll just... The Mohawk Indians first used smoke signals against the white men, although the Choctaws, Seminoles, and Cherokees were soon to follow. Sure, I remember them. The Apaches were the first to use tribal signals. Although this was soon done by the Paiute, the Yakamas, the Onondaga, Kyogu, the Navajos, the Agua Calientes, the Tuscara, the Zunis. How many more tribes are there? Twenty. The Blackfeet, the Hopi, the Dakota, the Ojibwe, the Algonquin, the Ottawa, the Yaquai, the Pima, the Onida, the Cayuga, the Tuscara, the Huron, the Erie, the Cayuse, the Snake, the Shoshone, the Walla Walla, the Abnaki. my first affair, so please be kind. And Davis's letter was found next to his body. It stated he came home, found his wife with Miller, shot them both, then turned the gun on himself. Identification at the morgue was... Or should I say how? Huh? 
I was about to send up smoke signals for you. Oh, please, don't mention smoke signals. I... Oh, yeah. That's why I was late. Indian guys. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Gosh, I had so many things to tell you now, I can't think of a thing. Me either. What would you like to do? Oh, anything you say. I guess we could go someplace. I guess so. Got any ideas? No, any, anywhere you want to go is fine with me. Could go for a ride or something. Yeah. Better go for a ride. Hey, there's an idea. Want to see a movie? Sure. Don't move. What's the matter? It's Thompson, the cleaning man. Is he looking? He's looking. Oh, great. I never thought the second feature would be us. Still looking? Still looking. How can we get out of here? Hmm? Think of something. It's too late to change cleaners. Can you reach the ignition? It's stuck. So are we. Stop it, for goodness sake! Try and reach the ignition. No stuff on the starter. If this wasn't so horrible, it would be kind of enjoyable. Throw it in reverse. like that stay home and watch television. Do you think he saw us? I'll find out first thing in the morning. How? I'll think of something. I'll call you. Okay. Oh! Honestly. What's this car got against me? <sighs> Goodbye, honey. Bye. Here, don't forget this. Oh, yeah, that thing. You don't have to put it on now. No. suit's a mess. I thought I'd drop it off at the cleaners. Oh, 
and you don't have to bother. He'll be here in a few minutes. This is his day. Yeah, but... Just came from the Matthews. Both kids are down again. Always a runny nose in that house. Why not? She lets him stay up half the night. He travels, you know. Yes. Uh, remember, these have to be back by Saturday. Oh, sure thing. Oh, good morning. Good morning. By golly, it was you, wasn't it? You get the horn fixed? Horn? What horn? Last night, the drive-in movie. You know, I kept saying to myself, I know that fella from somewhere. Me? Drive-in movie? <laughs> What are you putting in your martinis? Cleaning fluid? Are you kidding? I saw it with my own eyes. The two of you sitting there necking like a couple of school kids. <laughs> Thanks for trying, Mr. Thompson, but nothing that exciting has happened in this family for years. But I saw you. A big Buick convertible. We don't have a convertible. No, we got a hard top. A big black Buick. A Buick. Hard top. I can't understand it. Not with my eyes. 2020 vision. I was in the Marine Corps. It's a wonder we won. Hey, he ought to watch that mouth of his. He could start some nasty rumors. About you, darling. <laughs> Who'd ever believe them? <laughs> <laughs> When Larry told me what a close shave we'd had, we both knew it was time to call it off. But again, we had reckoned without our old nemesis, being constantly thrown together, like being partners in the Scotch foursome at the club. Or running into each other at the blood bank. And then it happened. Nobody planned anything, it just happened. Saturday night dance at the club. Jack was out of town, Mary had gone home with a headache, and I'd had one little drink too many. When Larry asked me to dance, I should have said no, but I was feeling too bubbly and relaxed and good, and, and the moment we touched, I went duck bumpy all over. If Larry had said, let me take you to Siberia, I wouldn't have minded. Actually, where we wound up was considerably warmer. <laughs> well, pardon me. That's perfectly all right. <laughs> oh, hey, goodness gracious sakes alive. They're, they're catching. <laughs> Say, funny, these places all look alike. That's just because you're a little tipsy. You're a little tipsy, too. I am not. I'm drunk. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just a little tipsy. You know something? I like you when you're a little tipsy. <laughs> your eyes get brownier, and your nose gets longer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think. <laughs> hey, there's a nice, friendly-looking little place. You're naughty. Just to talk things over? You're naughty. How else are we going to talk things over? Isn't that logical? We could talk things over in the car. That's too logical. Right? Yes, it certainly is. You can't talk things over in the car, can you? No. No. <laughs> Larry. Hmm? Have you ever... Never. That's nice. Pick a nice name. Something real married sounding. How about George and Martha Washington? Beautiful.
Hear me. You have a room? We don't have rooms. We might have a bungalow. Oh, oh that's swell. Five dollars a single, nine double. You alone? No, I've got a wife. I'm, I'm with a wife. Uh, with my wife. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. see, we've been driving all day, all the way from Texas. Left at dawn, came up through the panhandle. You see, my wife's folks live in San Diego, and we... I don't want to travel log, mister, just the nine bucks. You register here. First line is just your name. Mm -hmm. It'll come to you. Mr. and Mrs. G. Washington? That's right. You come from good stock? Yeah. Got a key? Here you are, Mr. Washington, bungalow seven. You won't have any trouble finding it. It's the one next to the cherry tree. Thank you. chair and nice closet, good reading lamp. It's just what we need to talk things over. Well, what's the matter? I'm just a little woozy, that's all. Be all right. Are you sure? If I could just get a cup of coffee, do you think you can find some? Oh, sure, there must be a million places around here. Thank you. Well, you make yourself nice and comfortable. I'll be right back. Thank you. You want cream and sugar? Black. A donut? No. Just coffee, please. Oh, by the way, have I ever told you I love you? No. Well, I do. No donut. Valley, Valley Pines, it's around here somewhere, unless the freeway came through. Valley Crown, that's it, finally. Pardon me, I thought this was seven. This is seven. Well, where's Kitty? Who's Kitty? My wife. What would I be doing with your wife? What would anybody be doing with my wife? No, no I didn't mean that. Now, these places are so confusing, I... 
Are you sure you're with the right woman? No, buddy, I'm with the wrong woman, but I've been with her for 30 years. Uh, uh, you don't understand. Um, I'm the lady from Bungalow uh, 7. Oh, Mrs. Washington. Yes. Uh, my husband went out for coffee. Mm. And, uh, uh, well, he's been gone over two hours. Mm. And I just began to feel a little concerned. Mm -hmm. You see... I like it black, and uh, mm -hmm. he uh, he might have forgotten and and got it with cream, and then realized it, mm. and uh, gone back to. Uh, to uh... Should I call you a cab, honey? Yes, please. Tahunga Taj Mahal, no tell motel. Ring a ding in. Hey. hey, you got a vacancy? Yeah, I just opened up. Bungalow 7. La Fiesta Arms, Valley Springs. Valley Springs, that's it. father of our country. What happened to Mrs. Washington? Took a taxi. Taxi? Where to? To tell you the truth, George, I think she went back to Mount Vernon. just seems all wrong. It seemed right in Acapulco, but here it just seems wrong. Yeah, well, don't you see? That's exactly what we need, another Acapulco. What are you talking about? Well, this fellow at the office, he's got this beautiful little cabin all alone in the woods near Monterey. Monterey? Yeah, we could spend three whole days there during the Christmas holidays. Are you out of your mind? No, I've got it all figured out. See, I'm going to be in San Francisco that week anyway. Jack and Joni will be up at Mama Skeen. Stevie's away with the Cub Scouts, and you'll be all alone. Oh, Larry, we mustn't. Think about it. But, Larry... Just think about it. No, we shouldn't. Just promise me you'll think about it. Think about it, he said as if I could think about anything else. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't think about anything except Larry and me and what to do about us. I thought about it when I should have been thinking about serving breakfast. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. When I should have been thinking about wiring the Christmas tree. I kept thinking about it right up to that inevitable day after Christmas, when Jack and Joni left for Mammoth. Stevie was away with the Cub Scouts. 
And I knew I'd have to face that moment when I'd be alone, all alone. And Larry would call from San Francisco. Hello. Hello, darling. Yes, I'll come. I'll be on the 10 o'clock plane. I love you, too. Bye. Well, I had said I'd go. But something was wrong. Very wrong. And then suddenly I knew. I knew that I had come to my own time of decision. I couldn't live with one man while I was in love with another. I could only go to Monterey one way, by making a clean break. And so I wrote Jack a note. A note telling him that I was in love, that I was leaving, and that I wanted a divorce. And that's how a Pasadena housewife happened to be in the Monterey airport with the husband of a very dear friend. All set. Got a wonderful place for lunch. Darling, sit down a minute. There's something we should discuss. Later. We can talk on the way to the cabin. Did I tell you? Acapulco all over again. Darling, there's something I want to... Same sunshine, same drinks. Darling. You know, this cabin's got complete privacy. Larry, I left Jack. I understand it's one of the most beautiful romantic... You left Jack. You mean you left him to come up here while he goes skiing? No. I mean, I left him for good. You're joking. Well, it wasn't exactly unexpected, was it? Well, of course not. It's, it's just that... We never discussed it or anything, and naturally, I... You mean you really left him? Well, it doesn't mean that you have to leave Mary. Well, I most certainly will. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. Well, don't be absurd. If you leave Jack, of course I'll leave Mary. After all, I'm in this as deep as you are. No, no I, I didn't mean that. I meant that, after all, we're adults, and we made our bed, and we lie in it. Well, that's not a very nice way to put it. Well, you know what I mean. We'll just face the music together. Kitty, we've got a lot to talk about. Check. Look, we'll just drive up to the cabin. We'll pick up a bite later. Just tell me you love me. Well, you know that I do. And I didn't make a mistake. I should say not. No regrets. Not one in the world. Besides, we'll have three whole days to think it over. Uh, talk it over. Marvelous air. Wonderful. Do you think we can keep it out of the papers? I sure hope so. I wouldn't want any scandal or anything. Depends on the lawyers, I guess. I suppose the whole thing will be terribly expensive. Two divorces, four lawyers. Four lawyers? We're not rewriting the Constitution. We're just getting divorced. Why do we need four lawyers? Yours, mine, Mary's, and Jack's. We could start our own bar association. Look, we're going to have to double up. We'll use one lawyer, Jack and Mary another. Oh. Better put the top up. It's not going to rain, I can always tell. Really? Yeah, I got this trick knee. Acts up during the rainy season. Oh, Jack, too. Same type injury. Did you get yours playing football? Bridge tournament. Tripped over a lamp. Oh. Dear, I don't want to take issue with your knee, but I think it's raining. Yeah. I'll put the top up. Stuck. 
Well, come on, let's get going before it starts to pour. Oh, well, there's nothing to it. Pressure tube probably slipped off the valve. Well, there must be a garage or a filling station around here someplace. What, and pay them $5 for something I can do with my eyes closed? Well, dear, they have electronic wizards in garages for things like this. I said I can fix it. Well, darling, I only thought that... Dear, I said I can fix it. All right, dear. Fix it. Three fathoms. I'll say one thing for Jack. He sure was handy with mechanical things. Well, bully for Jack. Your knee bothering you? My knee's fine. I just wondered. You sound a little testy. I wouldn't talk. Careful. S turn ahead. Speed limit strictly enforced. Don't pass on double line. Dear, hmm? do you always read every sign on the road? Out loud, I mean? I don't know. I guess so. Why? Does it bother you? Who, me? I should say not. Just that my mother used to do it. Oh, really? Drove my father out of his skull. Well, just so it doesn't bother you. No. no. Think when they rented your car for eleven dollars a day plus ten cents a mile, you could at least get the top up. You mean down? Up, down. What's the difference? Pneumonia. Kitty, look. There it is. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is. There's a town up ahead. I'll get the top fixed, and you can pick up some things for supper. I must warn you, I'm not a very good cook. Who's hungry? All the modern conveniences. Especially running water. We better come back when the tide's out. Come on. The kitchen's over there, dear. chicken. Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem to have any wings. You know why? It's a rabbit. A rabbit? 
Well, you know, it was one of those serve-yourself places, and I was kind of in a hurry, and... Yeah. Do you like rabbit? I adore them at Easter time in cages. Oh. Well, at least they took off the fur. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. I hear that's the best part. <laughs> Now, there's the lawyer's fees, the insurance payments, the back taxes, living expenses for Mary and Reno, payments for the kids' schools. Did I leave anything out? We got medical plan premiums, mortgage payments, transportation and setting up in Kankakee. Then there's... Kankakee? Yes, yeah, the home of Show Walter Pickles. The old man's been dying to get me out there. Raise a ten grand if I stay five years. Kankakee, Indiana? Oh, well, Illinois. It's only for five years, and I hear it's a wonderful little town. It's marvelous if you're a pickle. Well, you know, if you don't like that, we can work it out right here at home. Oh, no, dear. Kankakee will be fine. Okay. It, it's just that little Stevie has always been allergic to dill. Stevie? And you know, Joni's getting to the age where she should be meeting some nice young boys. Joni? But I suppose there's some nice sons of lovely pickle people in Kankakee, huh? You mean your kids are gonna live with us? Naturally. Anything wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. I just never thought of it before. Well, certainly. Just like your children will live with Mary and whoever she marries. Mary get married? She's a very attractive woman. Mary get married? Why not? Oh, she'd never do a thing like that to me. Oh, yes, she will. And your children will go and live with her, just like my children will come and live with us. What's the matter? Nothing, except it's beginning to sound like a troop movement. Oh, well, I guess it won't be so bad. After all, Jack will help out. There is such a thing as child support. Oh, no. Not for Jack. No, sir. Not after what I've done to him. Huh? I wouldn't take a cent of that man's money. That's right. Why deprive some poor, deserving racetrack? Jack's a sick man. His gambling's a disease. I know. I've seen him in Las Vegas taking the cure. I suggest we leave poor Jack out of this. He's going to be hurt enough after he reads that note. What note? The note I left for him. You left the note? Yeah, I left the note on the mantle. I told you about it. Oh, you didn't tell me about it. Didn't I? No. Now, what kind of a note? Well, just a note. Telling him. Telling him what? Everything. That you were coming up here? Well, yes. With me? Certainly. And without telling me? Well, I don't see what's wrong with that. Well, it's about the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Stupid? Yes, stupid. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's being called stupid. I didn't say you were stupid. I said what you did was stupid. Well, it takes a stupid person to do a stupid thing. Congratulations. You just passed the test. Oh, aren't we clever? Well, clever enough not to go around writing irresponsible, stupid notes. Well, I'm sorry I don't have your logical, clear-cut, brilliant mind. I'll buy that. That keeps us out in a blinding rainstorm while you're trying to prove your Werner von Braun with the top of a convertible. I may not be a mechanical genius like that road company Nick the Greek that you're married to. Careful! But I happen to know the two lawyers are cheaper than four. Ho, ho! And I can also tell the difference between a chicken and a rabbit if only by counting its feet. It was lying down! Some cook. Probably come home to dinner expecting prime roast beef and wind up with a plate of broiled gopher. That is a revolting thing to say. Well, if the shoe fits, eat it. Wear it. You are a loathsome, spiteful, despicable human being. And I will thank you never to talk to me or touch me again. Sorry, I said all those terrible things. So am I. 
I didn't mean a word of it. Me either. I really like Jack. I know you do. It was just that, well, we both realized that what we were doing was wrong. Terribly wrong. We couldn't go through with it. We couldn't hurt the people we love. We're such idiots. I know. That note. I gotta go home. Get rid of that note before Jack gets back. Yeah, I'll call Monterey, get some plane reservation. Operator, will you get me the airport of Monterey? What? Completely blocked? Yeah, thank you. What happened? Landslide. Monterey's completely cut off. The only way out's up Route 79 to San Francisco. Operator said local radio's got weather reports. Into Bigger storm the coming. Across the state, flooding streams and bringing heavy snows to the mountain areas. Warnings have gone out to all winter sports enthusiasts in the Mammoth and Squaw Valley areas to leave immediately to avoid being snowed in. Jack may have started back already. I better call and find out. Yeah. Mr. Weaver and his daughter left about a half an hour ago. They should be in Los Angeles in about six hours. Thank you. They'll be home in six hours. We better move. Operator, get me the International Airport of San Francisco. I'll turn in the car and you go to United and pick up the tickets. Right. And remember, the name is Mr. and Mrs. Fred Johnson. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Johnson. And be sure it's flight 888. 888. If we miss that, we're dead. Okay. husband phoned two tickets to Los Angeles. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Johnson. Yes, Mrs. Johnson, I'll check it. Well, bless my soul. Kitty Weaver. Oh, hello, Ham. Say, you're a long way from home. Yeah. Are you alone? No, I... Oh, I mean, yes, yes, I, uh... I just came up here to, uh to Gump's, uh, to do some shopping. That's a long way to shop. Yeah, you see... Everything's in order. Flight 888. Oh. That's Mr. and Mrs. F for Fred Johnson. I'm... A... No, I'm afraid that, uh, you've made a mistake. That's, uh, the name is Weaver. Weaver Johnson? No, no, just plain Weaver. Uh, Mrs. J for Jack. Jo Weaver. Oh, but I distinctly remember that your no, name No, no, was... I said Mrs. J for Jack Jack. We uh, Mrs. Jack Weaver. Well, I'm awfully sorry, but that flight is sold out. The uh, Johnsons held the last two seats, and there are eight standbys. I can get you on 734 in an hour. No, no, I, I don't want to be on 734. I, I want very much to be on flight 888. I, I, well, what I mean is there just isn't any, any other flight that I, that I could... I... Never mind. Uh, Ham, you know what you could do for me? You could buy me a drink. I am so thirsty. Well, that's a pleasure. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? Dodgers trade Morgan for Williamson. And Williamson is a powerhouse of a player. Will passenger Lewis and family report to airport office, lower concourse? Your baggage has been recovered. Reservation for Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Fred Johnson? Yes, and please hurry. Certainly, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Well, for heaven's sakes, Larry Gilbert. Well, what do you know? Isn't this a nice surprise? How are you? Oh, hello, Myrtle. I was just washing my hands. Uh -huh. Hands around someplace. Oh, goody, goody. <laughs> Here we are, two seats on 888. Everything's in order, Mr. Johnson. Well, Johnson? Yes, sir, Mr. and Mrs. Fred Johnson. No, there must be some mistake. The name is Gilbert. Gilbert Johnson? No, Larry. Larry Johnson? Larry Gilbert. <laughs> Look, sir, there are people waiting for these seats. Are you or aren't you Mr. and Mrs. F for Fred Johnson? No, I'm Mr. L for Larry Gilbert, and this is Mrs. H for Hamilton Busby. How do you do? Do we get dinner on this flight? Yes, madam. Now, sir, please, I want to find Meet out. Meat or fish? I... It's Friday, you know. Yes, I know. 
Well, oh, there's nothing religious about it. It's just that I'm on this high-protein, low-iodine diet. I see. The meat's no. all right, but the fish might be too high in iodine. Well, I'm sure they'll take care of you on the plane. What about a beverage? Anything you like. Coffee to your fish. Uh, meat. Uh, milk. Do you think I could get two? Oh, for heaven's sake, there's Kitty Weaver, and she's with Ham. Hammy, look who's here. Well, I'll be doggone. Larry Gilbert. Small world, huh? Very. How about that? How about that? Well, what do you think of this? Old home week. Hi, Kitty. Hello, Myrtle. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Hi, ham boy. Hello, Larry. Hi, Kitty. Gee, I'm glad to see you. Please, if you don't mind, are any of you Mr. and Mrs. F for Fred Johnson? No, but we'll be glad to use those seats. Mrs. Weaver and I, that is. Well, I'm sorry, but there are eight people ahead of you. Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Claude, Claude Hickman. Hickman. That's us, dear. Are we lucky? Claude, just please. I have two seats. That's Mr. and Mrs. C for Claude Hickman. That's right. Uh, Claude and Margie. Thank you. Come on, honey. Oh. Yeah. I'll get you two out on the next flight. We just got time. Thanks. How about that drink? I could use one. We had the most wonderful vacation in Pebble Beach. It was the Junior Chamber of Commerce tournament and convention. Man, what a time I just had. There was this tournament, see, and the convention. And there was this little blonde waitress. And right away, right away, Lair, she gives me the eye. Now, it just so happens that every time she's got time off, I'm supposed to be at the convention. Well, Brother Lair, it was three days like you never. Hey, come on. <laughs> Coming, dear. Martini on the rocks all around? Fine with me. Four, please. It was glorious weather, but poor Hammy missed all the fun. Poor baby had to work every afternoon. Yes, it was rough, rough. I kept saying, let the other fellows do it, but no, Hammy felt he had to do the job himself. Well, you know, if you want a thing done right, you've got to do it yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I... Say, I wonder if you'd excuse me for a moment. I forgot to check a bag. I played canasta all day long, and poor baby, when he came home, looked so tired. Do you play canasta? Yeah, it's rough. United Airlines jet flight 888 boarding for Los Angeles in 10 minutes. Mr. Hamilton Busby, telephone, please. Mr. Hamilton Busby. Oh, that, that's me. Uh, where's your phone, bartender? You can take it right here, sir. I don't know who that is. Hello? Ham, this is Larry. Who? Larry Gilbert. Can the girls hear you? Well, uh, no. Well, look, it just so happens that if you can stay over for a few hours, we might have ourselves one large ball. You see, I got this number from a fellow in the office, and she's got a friend. Real blonde, real friendly, and really stacked. Well, uh, this is an emergency, isn't it? Uh, it is short notice, I must add, uh, J.L. Have you any idea how we can work out the mechanics? Yeah, now you make some excuse to Myrtle, then get Kitty Weaver to use your plane ticket. And you and I'll come down a little later. Can you swing it? I'll do everything I can, sir, to comply with your wishes. Right. It's an emergency, kids. Married this afternoon. What about a friend? Terrible head cold. Well, you can't win them all. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, forget it. Look, it's nice to know that you got a friend that you can depend on once in a while. You know what I mean, Lair? Yeah.
I ran up to San Francisco for the day. Oh? Shopping? Yes. Good day? Yeah, I had a very good day. Jack, I, uh, I wrote a note. Yeah, I know. I have it right here in my pocket. Did you read it? Not yet. What's the matter with Joni? Poor kid, she kind of fell for one of the skiers up there. Terrific crush. Then she found out it really belonged to somebody else. But you know how kids are with their first real big heartbreak. Poor baby, I guess I better... Jack? Yeah? Would you do me a very big favor and throw that note in the fire? Sure. Thank you. Year we're going to Acapulco alone. Just the two of us. Sounds wonderful. Maybe I'll catch a fish like Kitty did. Just hang on to the one you got. Happy New Year, Larry. Happy New Year, Doc. Happy, happy New Year, Honey. Year. Happy New Year, Honey. Happy New Year, Larry. Jack, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Goodbye, Mr. Washington. Goodbye, Mrs. Washington. Good thing you weren't Paul Revere. Those are the facts of life. The avalanche. 